Okay. So, going back to the beginning, is that if the dryer didn't work at all, like didn't light up or whatever, we have to have power to the board. And we said that it should be 120 volts coming into the board. So the first question was, where was line one coming into the board? And if I trace this circuit, line one comes down, goes here, goes through the thermal limiter, and to the board here. Okay? Where does it go out the board? That's line one. So what? What if we got line one coming in to feed it? What are we looking for? Neutral. Neutral. So we want to find out where is neutral going to that computer board. J two two. J two two. This one over here, right? J two two. Okay. So that would be here if my computer would would work. All right. So. Tracing that circuit is, is easy on this one somewhat because it's not a crazy diagram. But when we look at wiring diagrams, we have to do what we call strip circuits. Strip circuits are given to you in some manufacturers, like the old Maytag Admiral dryer diagram. They would show the diagram like this, but then they would just have a horizontal line for the timer motor, a horizontal line for the dryer motor, a horizontal line for the heater, and they would show all the components that are just in the heater circuit, that are just in the motor circuit, just in the timer circuit. So you almost got to look at what is feeding the control board circuit in this case. So the control board is here, but power is here and here, and we need to know why the board's not working. So the first test, if the dryer didn't work at all, we said was what? You guys were all saying at the beginning, we checked power, power right? Power. And we need at least 120 volts, and it has to be line one and neutral. Look at what's different about line one and line two. What, what's different on this Frigidaire diagram from line one and line two that most machines are different? Most manufacturers don't do this. Frigidaire is doing it different from what everybody else does. The 120 is not going to the 240? No, not, mm -hmm. not the 120 is not going to the 240. The, 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 uh, normally the terminals will be adjacent the way you can test them. The, the 120, uh, 115, they, you, they will be like adjacent to each other, right close to each other. But no, in, in, in most manufacturers, line one is usually what color? Black, black, it's usually black. black yeah. What did they put line oh, one? Oh, both red. Red, and, that red. Was and black. what did they put line two? Black. Black. So Frigidaire does it different than everybody else is doing. Okay? So if I went to this machine, the first thing I want to do is I want to check red to white for 120. Okay? If I had 120 there, what is the very next step? <clears throat> I, I went to the back of the machine with the cord, met the right. machine, the three yeah, screws. You're going to see the power coming out of the board next, right? Not coming out of the board. We just did a diagram here saying this is how the board gets power, so what, what do we do? Check. 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 We put a meter lead here and a meter lead here to see if I have 120 there. Now, if I have 120 at the plug, mm -hmm. I don't have it at the board. What could be bad? Outlet thermal yeah. limiter. This this thermal limiter here. I said it, I don't have 120 here. Yeah. I have it here, but I don't have it here. It could be some. It could be a broken wire. We could always say there's a broken wire, but very rarely does a wire break in the middle of the circuit. I have seen it. So anything before the board, any any fuse or any type of. Um, Control. Control before that board. If you ain't getting 120 at the board, that's what you check. Yes. So if the board itself is not getting power, first you have to identify all these wires. Oops. What did I just do here? You have to identify all these wires and say, okay, which one of those wires are the wires bringing power into that board? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was the very first step. Do I have power into this board? And my meter said, no, I don't have no voltage at that point. 
So then I said, well, I have voltage at the plug. I don't have it coming to the board. I have to do what they call backtrack. Backtracking is by putting your meter leads on a point where it should have power, whether it's at the motor, right. at the heater, or at the control board where power is at. And backtracking, we have two meter leads. We only move one meter lead back at a time. In other words, we put them on here, we only move one back. We either take this one and go back to neutral and leave that meter lead there, or we put the two here and we backtrack this way with the other meter lead. And I go here, and then I would go here. Okay? So if I had voltage here, but not here, then the problem is the fuse is not letting the power in. But the whole time I'm moving my meter lead at this point, I'm leaving the other one on the control board when I'm making that test. So I'm, I got two meter leads, but I don't move them both at the same time. And I don't pick them both up and go over here. I am doing voltage sure. testing, okay? And I, the voltage is somewhere in this circuit. We know it's at the supply, but it's not coming down. We need to say how far from the plug did it come down to that board? Okay, so if we were to look at this, and I, and I wanted to do something a little bit different here, so let me see if I can open up another uh, paint, uh, let me just do it here. This computer, like I said, to get me a new one tomorrow because this thing is just not working right. I just need to copy files off of here before it paint, not 3D. Let me just search it because I don't see it. I don't want to lose that file. <laughs> okay, so what we're supposed to do is if we looked at this diagram here, power comes in red, goes to the thermal limiter. I wish I could draw on this board. I just don't know why my, my board's not reacting to my, my drawing here. So when we look at this, I don't know why I don't have uh, my full tools. Okay. We look at this, red comes down, so I'm just going to use the color. Red comes down, and I'm just going to do a straight line. Red comes down, goes to the thermal limiter, so that's just a, a, a little circle. I'm not going to be able to draw like I normally draw. I wish I had my old board back. And then from there, it goes red with black to the board. So now we're at the board. And on the other side is neutral, and I can't use white because yeah, you won't see it. it. So I use gray, and that's it. That is this circuit that we drew. I mean, power comes in. Now, now when I touch it, uh, uh, uh. okay. Now nothing's gonna work. <laughs> so now if my, my mouse is still working. Now that I've left it. It's not working now. I just killed it. Anybody see the mouse on the screen? Mm -hmm. No. You're going top left. Huh? It's top left. Yeah, but it's not. Let's try that again. Okay. So, red comes in and goes to the thermal fuse. Red comes in and goes to the thermal fuse. From the thermal fuse, it goes into the board. J21, and then it comes out J22, right back to neutral. So that's just a straight, simple circuit. That's that's all that that's is. That's a strip circuit? That yeah. would be like a strip circuit, but it, it would be drawn with electrical symbols. Okay. I just don't have the opportunity to draw yeah. in here. The uh, For some reason, the touch part of my, my computer is not responding. It used to work. Just give me a second to try to reset this one second. See if it 
works. I just plugged it in, so let's see. Because if I can draw it, then that would be nice. It's, it's not giving me the opportunity to do that. So I'm sorry if you guys are sitting here. I'm sort of blocked because I got to sit there and do this. So it, it, if, it was, if it was an actual strip circuit, it, it would look just like this. It would have, um, I'm just going to draw a straight line, for example. Oh, that's not a straight line. Shape my, it'd be a straight line like this. And we would have a thermal fuse here. It would look like this. I would make it look like a thermostat. Mm -hmm. My drawing is horrible with this. So <clears throat> that would be there. And we'd have our computer board here. And that's it. So, I mean, there's not a lot there, but the strip circuit would be more like that. Maybe a drawing of a transformer or something. Just a straight line. Okay, but let's take a look at something a little more, a little more difficult. One thing too, on a, on, a, on a machine, sometimes those two parts are not that close together either, right? Isn't it? Third, the one, two parts, be specific on the parts. The, 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 the terminal, the, the neutral on the board, and the power going into that limiter. I called you actually one time on something like that on a G where the board's dead and I couldn't figure out what's going on. And you said, there's got to be some type of fuse in the middle. And when I got the circuit, I read it, and, and it was. That was at the back of the drum, back to that round part. Yeah. That other part was at the front of the machine. On so, the board. so, so let, that, that, that's a good point. So we, we put our meter here and didn't have voltage. And I said, go here and then here. And like you said, it's a little hard to go there and then there. So what you at least have to do is leave your neutral here, take this one, and just go back to line one, and if you see how, see if you have 120 here. If I have 120 there and don't have it here, I lost it in this line. The line that brings the power to the board, I lost the voltage. So I know at least that side of my diagram is where my problem's at. So what would the next step be if I couldn't do voltage because it's all the way in the bottom of the machine, for example? What would be the next step? If I went here and here with my meter, and I didn't have voltage, and I moved the meter lead here, and I have voltage. I know that my problem's between here and here. It's not getting down there. What would the very next test be if I couldn't voltage backtrack? Yes. Ohm test. Ohm on what? Continuity. On what though? On the thermal limiter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You would ohm out the thermal limiter. Now you go right down to it, ohm it out. Now, if it ohmed out good, if you got an ohms reading, now what do you do? Then you you do it. Check for continuity between the beginning to the air, to the uh, thermal limiter. Limit. Yeah, you could, but let's not go that far. Mm -hmm. You can get that to that thermostat, right? We don't have to press start on our dryer. The start's on the control board, so you're not going to see the button. We don't have to press start on our dryer to have power, because from here and here, as long as it's plugged into the wall, there should be power there. Always, always. Whether a dryer's running or not, those two terminals always got power. So I unplug the machine, I go down to that thermostat, and I ohm it out. That's good. So either the wire from here to here is broke, or the wire from there to there is broke. Hmm. Is there another test I could do while I'm at the thermostat? Anybody got any ideas? You can jump. You can jump with the... Um... Why would you jump it? The, the meter said zero ohms, so the part's good. The thermal fuse is good. How about this? Damn thing. Let me get this diagram here. Um, neutral has got this wire here. And what is that symbol in the bottom of that little circle right there? That's ground. So neutral and ground are connected together. So if I plug the machine in, I got it open. I got to make sure nothing's touching. I got the machine open. I plug it in. I could touch this side of the thermal fuse or that side of the thermal fuse. 
and just find a, a ground screw Go or, or a clean piece of metal down there, right? Yeah, you go to the machine. And I can use that to ground. So if I check from here to ground, I know that this line is good if I have voltage here and here, and the thermal fuse is good, but I didn't have it here. Okay, so I know that wire is my problem. Okay, now we can't use ground on a 240 volt circuit. I will go over that in a minute. I want to go over another scenario about the machine before I get into that. But if you're checking the heater circuit and want to find if it's broken, you cannot use one terminal on ground. Okay, that will never work. And I'll show you why that won't work. But let's go over this. Okay, let's say the board lights up. You press start and the dryer doesn't want to run. First of all, that tells me yes. what? Here and here what? You have power. Mm -hmm. I have power. Mm -hmm. How much voltage does it take to light up the board? When you press start, what's the first component that turns on? The motor. The motor. How much power goes to that? Well, that's the relay switch. Motor relay switch. The only part that uses 240 is the heater. It goes through a switch. Well, look, it's drawing now. What the? Got a mine of his own. I don't know. It, it drew a line there. You saw that? It was a ghost. Okay, so it does go through the motor here and go out to line two, but the motor itself, these are the windings in the motor, they go to neutral, they take 110. We know the board lights up, so that means what? You got power. You got, you got, you got, 120. You got the 120. You got 120 board, but what else do you know? What else do you know by that? Now, do you got power to the motor? No, we don't know if we got power to the motor. What did we just check a minute ago? We we checked what part? The thermal. 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 The outlet thermal. Is that good or bad? That's yeah, good. It's good, good. That's good because good. the board light up. Uh, that's nothing. But the board lights up. So I know that that fuse is good because I said power has to be here and here, and I won't have power at those two points if that fuse is bad. But I know that fuse is good because I saw the board light up. Again, knowing the circuit and knowing if this is good or bad, what that would cause, that, if that was bad, obviously the motor wouldn't work, but the board wouldn't light up either. But since the board is lighting up, I don't check that fuse, okay? I check the circuit, but I don't check that fuse. So we're like, okay, so we press start, the motor's supposed to run. The motor switch. Right? Switch. But let's see something. Uh, first, we need to know what? The circuit for the motor, right? Like, well, all the things the motor goes through. So let me go ahead, let me just sit here for one for a second. And let me draw the circuit for the motor. Mm -hmm. I go with a, a little bit bigger brush here, and I'll use, I'll use uh, this color here. And let me, let me get like a nice little fancy brush here. And I'm going to go down. I'm going to go through here, but I'm going to go through the door switch this door time. Switch. There was a board on the board, a relay. The motor itself, it's going to come down here and go up and up. First of all, how many components are in series with my motor? Total components. Motor relay. Three. 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 We got the motor relay, the door switch, the door switch, and that fuse. Those are the only things that could stop that motor from running. So now you're looking at the door switch. All right. But it's not the, uh, that fuse. We know that for a fact, right? Because the board lights up. Mm -hmm. So we need to check the door switch. Let's go back to the computer board. Give me one way you would check the door switch and where you would put your meter leads. And before you shout it out, <coughs> raise your hand so I can pick on you and, and let you answer it without other people uh, cutting you off. Anybody? You got an idea, Chris? What What would you test and where would you test it? To, we're testing the door switch for the board. Yes. J, J12 and J22? J4. J12? Is that J12? Yeah. That's J4, 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 J4,
and, and then the neutral here? Yeah. And what would I be checking for what? Uh, I mean, you, my meter be set on what? Voltage. I'd be set on voltage. Okay? And if I put my meter lead right here, and I can't, let me just do a, a different color. If I put my meter lead right here, is that a different color? No. There we go. Put my meter lead right here, and my meter lead right here, I should have 120. If I don't have 120, what's my problem? Door switch. Door switch. Door switch. But now if you go back before the door switch, you have 120. But watch this. I can't go back this way, but the door switch down inside the machine. I'm up in the computer area right now, in the controls. Now i got to go down in the machine. But I'm at the controls. What can I do just to confirm the problem is my door switch? With one meter lead, I can move it one place and say, ah, it is my door switch. What's go this? back before the door switch, after, after the fuel. Two one. Okay. You go to one, like Chris said. You move the meter lead from here to here, and we know we have voltage here because the board lights up. <clears throat> but you could also put your meter lead here and here for ohms um, you, and ohm out the door switch, I couldn't you? Can you? Instead of like, what if you don't check the door switch from the control board? You, you could go straight. down to the yeah. switch yeah. itself and check the switch. Okay? Mm -hmm. So. If you don't have voltage here, we already know we have voltage here because the board's lighting up and you have to have voltage here for the board to light up. Okay? So I already know, if I don't have voltage here, the only thing from there to there is that door switch and a couple of wires. Again, wires do break, but they're not very common to break. But, okay, so my door switch isn't working, but, you know, one thing I hate is going to someone's house and I, I test them, I know the door switch is bad, but now I got to come back and check it again after I replace the door switch to make it work. What if it had another problem before that? How can I make sure that, okay, the door switch is bad, but I want to make sure everything else is working good before I leave their house. Now, if the motor was totally bad, and we'll get into the motor problem in a minute, but the motor's totally bad, then obviously I can't run it. But how could I check it? Like, just to make sure, oh, look, I want to make sure the motor's running, I want to make sure the heater's working. What could I do? Jump. You could jump the, what? The door switch. And where would I jump it? Let me erase these lines here for a second. Now, how come you, couldn't you also test the J42 to J41? J42 to <laughs> J41. Yes, you could, but you're going through the motor. Oh, okay. I got you you could do that. But here's a true neutral. I got you. And you know that that neutral is good. So by going here, you're only going. We know this is good because the board's lighting up, but yeah. we said earlier that that has to be good. If I go here and here and I don't have voltage, yeah. here and here, the motor, the motor could be bad or my door switch could be bad. Mm -hmm. Right? If the motor overload is open mm -hmm. and I don't have voltage at this point, then... If the motor if the motor's open, I don't have the voltage at that point. It'd be the same as if the door switch is open. I can't now. I can't get this. Uh, when you do stuff, this this screen keeps moving. I know it's 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 pathetic. The problems there, but I can't even get that that thing to move. Let me go over here. So if I go here and here, and I don't have voltage. If the door switch is bad, I won't have a voltage reading. If the motor is bad, I won't have a voltage reading. I'll have, if the door switch is good and the motor is bad, I'll have line one up to this point. But because neutral is broken, my meter will show zero volts, even though there is line one at that point. That's why we had one meter lead on neutral and not here on this circuit. Because it'd be testing like the same thing. No, it, it's not a bad test. But the problem is, uh, like I said, you don't know whether your problem's on this side of the circuit or that yeah. side of the circuit. So by putting one meter lead here, going back to neutral, and I put my other lead, meter lead here, I know that my problem is on this side, and the only thing there is the door switch. Okay? We don't check voltage here to test the relay. Okay? I'll go over that in a minute. But if... 
this was good, and this was good, and this was good. So if I said the thermal limiter is good, the door switch is good, and the motor is good. Let's just say I said those parts were good. If I put my voltmeter here, I, I didn't press start or nothing. If I put my voltmeter here, what reading should I get at that point? You'd probably get zero, huh? No? <coughs> no, anybody else? 120. 120? So I, I, one person says zero, one person says 120. How many of you say zero? I say 120. Nobody says zero? 120. How many people say 120? As long as the door is closed, this switch is closed, and that fuse is closed, you're going to have line one here. And your neutral is going to go through the motor, so this is going to be open, and it will not close until you start the dryer. So you will have line one and neutral, neutral back feed through the motor, you'll have 120. Without pressing start. Because the moment you press start, this relay is supposed to close. Now it all becomes line one. Your, mo your meter won't read it. This is with the dryer off. Okay? So Willie, your dryer ain't working. These are things you do to test your dryer. So, <laughs> um, so if I go here and here and I have voltage, I know my door switch is good. What do I do next? So if I'm checking J42 and J22, what would I do next? You said, oh, that's good, man. So you're trying to text me. Well, no, I, I know I got power here yeah. and here but my motor's still not working. Now what do I do? Because that tells me the door switch is good and that thermal fuse is good. Uh, we we might have issues at the board now. Because we got okay, the board so meter. where do I put my meter leads and what do I test for? Okay, you want to test for like that, that motor relay. Really? Can like we motor test relay. for continuity at the motor relay? See if that, uh, well, in order for that motor relay, relay to close, it needs to be energized. Mm -hmm. There is a way to unplug those wires, but if it's on one big plug, which J42 and J41 is on a plug J4. There might be other components on J4 I don't see, but you might disconnect something else. Sometimes it's one big plug. So let's just say you can't unplug it because if you unplug it, you disconnect power to the whole board. Now the board don't light up. It, it's not the case on this one, but what if I just move the meter lead from here to here and leave the other one on neutral? I press start, what's supposed to happen? You see that. Supposed to close. Oh, That's supposed to close, so what will happen? I'll have what here? Power. Power. Line one and neutral, I'll know if the relay is closing. So if I have voltage here and here, I got power coming into the board. If I move my meter here and here and I don't have power, I know what? Relay. My relay's not closing. Relay. That's after you press start, you said. That's after you press start, yes. So now, going back to my question before, is like the door switch was bad. Or let's say the relay is bad. Before I leave, I don't want to order a control board if this relay is bad and the control board is 120 bucks. And I tell the customer, sir or ma'am, your, your control board is bad. This relay is open. That's why the motor's not running. Uh, it'll be $120 plus my labor and everything. I go and order the part and I come back and put that in and it doesn't run. I got some other problem in my machine. So, we can use a jumper wire. Now, it's very important that when you use a jumper wire, that you know how to connect this wire. And I know people that use jumper wire and they put the wire on line one and put it on neutral and jump that. No. Do not use a jumper wire unless you know what you're jumping. This is a switch. I could jump from here to here if I want. As long as the door switch is closed and that's closed, I don't even have to press start. The motor will run. Now let me ask you a question. Let's say that relay is bad. I'm going to take a jumper wire. I'm going to cut two ends off this wire, strip the wire, and I'm going to stick on the board on those two. I'm going to put a jumper wire like that. 
What's going to happen when I plug the machine in? It's going to come on automatically without you pressing any buttons. It's going to come on without pressing any buttons, right? Okay, what else? Start heating. Okay. It's going to continue to run. Is the heater going to work? The heater is yeah. going to start heating. No. Oh, because it's not getting the 240, it's still mm -hmm. on the 120. No, let's say the machine has proper power. Oh, okay. okay. The, the machine has 240, 120 all day. We determine that we have power coming into the board on this relay, but we don't have it coming out. That's why the motor's not running. So we run a piece of wire here to jump it out, mm -hmm. and the motor's going to start. Mm -hmm. As long as the door is closed, I can open the door and the motor stop. Close the door and the motor will start running again. I don't have to press start because pressing start closes that relay. But the thing was, is it going to heat? And the answer is no. 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 Why? Because it's not completing through the door switch? No, because we are going through the door switch and we're jumping the board. Mm -hmm. Okay? But in order for this heater to work, what do I need here? Just like I said, the motor will start without without pressing start because it closes the relay. It, the relay is waiting for me to press start. If I don't press start, the relay for the heater will not close. The motor will run. We will not have heat. So what I need to do is jump it out and then tell the board, hey, give me time, dry, and press start. So it'll energize my heater circuit and the heater will run. Otherwise, I'll see the motor run and not heat. Now I think I got a heating problem. But I have to press start in order to close the relays on the board. Just because I jumped this relay out, the board itself is not running. I'm just, it's just like taking the two wires off the board and sticking them together. I'm not using the board to make the motor work. But I still have to use the board to make the heater work. Oh, so when you jump it, then that's when you go straight into the start? When I jump it, I'm going right past the, the, the relay, you can and pressing start is yeah. closing that relay. You're just completing the circuit when you, when you, when you jump it. You're just yes. completing the circuit. You make right. the circuit you were going through these two components right through the motor now. Yeah. Now, the door switch, how would I use the jumper wire on the door switch? Let's say I go to the customer's house. And I checked here and here, and I got power. The board lights up, and then I checked here and here, and I didn't have power. So I said, you know, problems my door switch. Go back. How would I do it? Door switch to. If I jump out this relay, if that door switch is bad, it don't matter. I'm not going to get power coming in here. Oh, you got to press start. So you you got two problems. You got to you got the relay bad and the door. No, 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 no. No. Let, let, let's let's rephrase this. Okay, motor don't work. We tested here, our board lights up all day. I tested here and here and I don't have voltage. So I know I got voltage here on this side of the door switch. I know I don't have voltage there. I know my door switch is not sending voltage, okay? But my dryer is not running. I want to see the dryer run before I leave. Nothing wrong with this relay, okay? Because I'm not getting power there, I still need to see if the relay is working and the motor's working. So where do I put my jumper wire and how do I jump it? Okay, whatever the two wires from the, that goes on the door, door switch, switch, you take the jumper wire point. and you put them on those two prongs. I could go to the door switch and jump them, but I'm already here doing these tests on the board. Why do I want to go down to the door switch? Can I do it from the board? Yeah. Where would I be on the board and how would I jump so it? J21 and J42. J21 and J42. Very good. Very good, Malcolm. So I would put a jumper here, from here to here, because we know this is line one, and this is also supposed to be line one. So if I put a jumper here to here, I'm bypassing the door switch. Will the motor start when I jump it out? Yeah. It should, because it will close, right? But if I jump it out, I plug the machine, the motor's going to start running? No, you got to put a start. I got to start, start wide. Because, motor relays to because this relay has to close. But once you jump it, it should automatically close, right? Huh? So once you jump it, it should automatically close, right? When I jump it, I'm setting power here, but this relay will not close until I say time dry and start. So it has to be on time dry. Well, no, it could be automatic dry or, or any, it could just be air dry. 
because all we're checking now is if the motor is running. Okay. But I have to energize the board and tell the board to start so the relay on the board will close and the motor will run. Okay. Any questions on door switch, relay, the motor here, that circuit? Okay, so let's look at the heater circuit. How many controls or safeties are in series with the heating element? Four, two, three, three, four, one, two, because you got both to the bottom. Yeah, you got two. You got two going in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, nah, two. Three. There's three? Three. Yeah. One. Two. Two. Four. 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 I got a four. Four. What's that? Okay, how many? I say three. 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 I go back to three. three. It's three. Three, three. three fuses. So five of you say three. How many people say four? No, the heating element and Who's the two things that affect the heating element? Besides the heating element itself. You got two. The two then. I'm talking about controls or safeties that control that heating element. Oh, then you got an outlet. Yeah. Not not, that's not the same. A controller or safety is the controller, not the driver. So the two fuses then, they are pop. There's four. Four? Four? There's four. The relay on the board. Oh, 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 oh you can't. I, I erased it by mistake because yeah. I have the eraser and the stupid. Let me see something here. Mm -hmm. If I can go back on my diagram. I don't know if I can get that. Two relays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two okay. relays are okay. controlled. So there's a relay on the board. That's one. The two fuses. High limit thermostat. Two. That's In the thermal. Three. Like the, the, the mouse is following me now. <laughs> when I don't want to do it. And, and what about the centrifugal switch? One M and two M. Yeah. That's four. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Now so let me let me give you an example of why ground mm -hmm. will not work like a 120 volt circuit as far as testing one terminal to ground. That won't work. If you had one of those little pocket voltage testers where you can go and say if you have voltage there, that won't work because no matter where the circuit is broken, you're always going to have voltage. It'll always read one point. You always read one story. Let's just say this relay is not closing. Mm -hmm. This is followed back. It goes all the way to line one. Yeah. From here to ground, I've got 120. But when the motor's running, the switch is closed. Line two would go through the heater all the way up to here. So if I touch this terminal to ground, I'll still have 120. I'm using line two to ground instead of line one to the ground. <clears throat> so if this is open, that open is going to separate line one from line two. So the ground test would be more for one. It only works on 120 volt circuits where you can, I could go here to ground, 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 all day. And I'll have voltage if it's good. If I don't have voltage, it's bad. Uh, but on a 240 volt circuit, we cannot test it that way because we're going to have 120 volts, whether it's line one or line two, no matter where the circuit's broken. Okay, what about the neutral line? What about neutral? You go from neutral to ground, what you get? You're neutral to ground? Mm -hmm. Neutral and ground are the same thing. Okay, my bad. I'm looking at something different. I'm thinking about something different. Okay, so let's just say the heater circuit don't work. You got 240 volts to the dryer, 120, 120. You got power. Okay, let me ask you this. So what if you're testing for 240? Say you got an outlet or a connection for a dryer. Okay, you got like one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Four prongs. All right, so you, okay, when you're testing, which which prong do you That's test right. to get the 240? Okay, you say you're right here, say you're line one, and you go. The, the two outside blades. Yeah. The two outside blades, 240, right? Yeah, the, the one with the L shape is neutral, and the round one is ground, and so the other two on the outside that go up and down. Okay, yeah. That's. Line one, line two. On a two forty, on a three wire, they're angled like this, and the neutral is like L shaped. Mm -hmm. So the two angles are, are two forty. 
where that's 120. The, the L is neutral. Mm -hmm. Think of L for laundry, okay? okay. Um, four wire ground and, and neutral, same thing, yes. okay? So let's go back to this heater not working though. The dryer's running, the heater's not working. What are we going to do? Where's the best way to test this problem? Yeah, we've had the heating earlier. Hmm? Our whole, whole bunch of heating on the heater. The heater. Oh, what? The heater. The heater. Element. Yeah, we can home out the heater, but I'm if the heater the gives me good resistance, then what do I do? I'm already at the heater, so what should I do? Really? High limit? Check right. voltage. Oh, the voltage. As soon as you get to 240. Hmm. Hmm. Now, I told you guys a minute ago, going to ground won't work, right? Mm -hmm. You can go to ground, but you have to do it safely. Or this is not a best recommended check. You gotta be plugged in. But if you look, this is a black wire coming to the heater, and this one's what? Yellow. yellow. Okay. Okay. If I take the yellow wire off of the heater, while the heater, I mean, while there's power to the. Well, obviously, first we're gonna plug oh, it, God, disconnect God. it. But we have to make sure if we take the wire off, what? If we plug it in, that wire could be live voltage, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to do that. That's not safe, huh? Hmm. Let's see. What else could I do? Well, if I put tape on that yellow wire, take the wire off, tape it up so it don't touch nothing. I press start and the dryer is running. If this wire is off, and I think my eraser is here. Come on, baby. That, that won't show up, right? I told you, it doesn't work when I, when I want it to work. But if I take this wire off, it's not connected to the heater now. I'm just going to erase it that far. You know, so the heater is still connected to the line one circuit, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can put my meter on either side of the heater to ground, and if I press start, I should get what? 120. 120. And I can backtrack here, here, here. If I don't have 120, and I don't have 120, and I have 120 right here. The limiter is back. Because I don't have voltage coming out of the limiter, but I have voltage going into the limiter. So when you're testing backtracking, most parts have two terminals. Okay, one is power coming in, the other one is power coming out. And you say, well, I look at it, how do I know which one is in and out? How do I know if the power is coming in on this one and out on that one or vice versa? It doesn't matter. Because if you go to a part like a thermal fuse or a thermostat, and you got voltage on one side of it and not the other, it is bad. Okay, it doesn't matter if the power is coming in this way and going out that way. If this is open, one side's gonna give me no reading, the other side's gonna give me a reading, that is the bad part. Mm -hmm. But if I have voltage here and I have voltage there to ground with this disconnected, that part is good all day. Because I got it coming into that thermostat, and then I go here and checking out the thermostat, and I got it right there. So when you guys are doing these projects with the machines, you're taking stuff off and you're ohming them out. But what I want you guys to do, and I haven't really pressed you and Richie, you haven't even got to that point yet. You're still taking the machine and putting it together. But like now, once you go in diagnostic and energize the pump, well, if you hear the pump running. That's good. But what about the heating element in the drum of the washer? The thermistor, I guess. What? I think that's a thermistor. Well, it has a thermistor and a heater oh, together. Into the washing machine yeah. in the drum. Mm -hmm. Most of you guys tested it now. How do I know if that heater's working? I can't open a drum up and feel the heat. So there's two ways you can test it. Yeah, the wire is going up to the board from that. You got yeah, the wires from... going to the board. Can we yeah. put an amp probe around one of the wires and see if the heater's working? Amp probe just mm -hmm. like the pump? The, yeah. the clamp that goes around okay. the wire. Yeah. yeah. And if I got amperage, what's it telling me? The heater's working, right? Yeah. But could I also, what, what if I didn't have amperage? Yeah, it doesn't tell me what's broken in the circuit. Just like this dryer, I don't know if it's a relay on the board for that heating element or the element itself, 
but could I put my voltmeter on the two wires of the element? Let's say that this wire is connected again. Can I put my voltmeter here with alligator clips? Clip them on, get my hands out. Plug the machine in, go into diagnostics, Go oh, to yeah, the yeah. step that energizes the heater yeah. and start that step. Hey, I got voltage. I got my amp probe around the heater. No amperage, but I have voltage. My heater's back. If I don't have voltage on that step, it could be a fuse or thermal limiter somewhere in the circuit or the board. That voltage is not getting to that part. But part of the diagnostics, a lot of you guys started going through diagnostics and you're like, oh yeah, I'm doing diagnostics. Look, the pump's draining, the machine's spinning, the diagnostics are great. But the diagnostics are also there to energize that component. You can hear a pump run, mm -hmm. but put your meter on it. Figure out if one day I went to that machine and the pump wasn't running and I go into diagnostics, how would I get down there to even test that? How would I put my voltmeter on that pump to test if I'm getting voltage to it? Because just ohming a part out doesn't mean it's good or bad. The winding could be good. You could have voltage to it. The pump impeller could be broken and it's not spinning. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of those washer pumps, they just go back and forth like this, like they don't rotate but they got power to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you could have power, you could have amperage, it's not pumping, but you know the pump's bad, okay? Could be something clogged in there too or something, but this is the point. Some things you can see or hear when you energize it in diagnostics, but the point of diagnostics is, well, how do I know if that part is getting voltage and it's not working? Or how do I know that I'm not getting power to that part and it's not working? So these steps that you make when you're in diagnostics are supposed to say, well, I'm in step 10 and the drain pump's supposed to run. Let me put my voltmeter on it and see if I got voltage to it. I know it's running, but one day you go to someone's house and it's not running, you would want to know how to do the test here before you go to someone's house and you say, well, how the heck am I going to test that? Because mm -hmm. some are not that easy to get to, right? Mm -hmm. So how would you get to the drain pump? I think I take the whole front of the machine off, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Can, you can you test on the board? So when you find a place on the board, like let's say the pump is the heater, I wouldn't have put my voltmeter here and my voltmeter on neutral and then say, okay, energize it. Okay, I, I, there's nothing but the pump connected to the board there, so that's that's all. That's all. If I got power there, my pump's bad. Best way. That's where you schematic come in. At, and then it's well, this you. this is you have to figure out ways. How can I use the schematic? And by looking at it, not just do I have voltage to this part, what are the parts it goes through and how, what are different ways, like this door switch. I could, I could go to the door switch, check it out, but I could check the door switch from this point on the board. Mm -hmm. I could jump this out, and if it runs, I know the door switch is bad. Mm -hmm. So these are different ways that you can use the diagram, and you're only going to learn that through repetitive practice. Now, I don't want you guys just jumping things out just to see if it works or not and then blow a circuit breaker and call me later and tell me, uh, Richard, it's not working, you know. Call me and say, listen, I want to jump this out. Say, okay, go ahead and put your wire. Let me know before you plug it in. And I'll go take a look at it and say, yeah, that's a good test. Or, or if you put it wrong, at least I can explain to you, no, no, we'll put it here and not there. And that's how we would test it. But this is what you use diagnostic for and how to use it. Learn to use the tools, whether it's diagnostics, your meter, the diagram, and how to put them in. Yeah, one of my supervisors was working on one of those oven ranges, microwave oven ranges, right? They got like maybe three or four boards on it. So what tripped me out, he, you know, normally when you check door switches on the microwave, you put them on the prong, you open the door, beep, you close the door, you see one open, one normally open, one normally close. Well, he went to the board like he's showing us right now. He went to the board and like he opened the door, beep, closed the door, and I was saying, okay, you can check from the, from the board. Just look to the board. Yeah, you can do that, yeah. but I, I don't know if my video is online, but, you know, if you open and close the door and the light goes on and off, we know the door sensing switch is good or bad. Mm -hmm. If you close the door and press start 
and the light comes on, but you don't hear the fans running or the transformer, mm -hmm. the primary door switch is bad. If you hear the fans and the light come on, but you don't hear the transformer or the magnetron humming, it's either transformer's bad or relay number two on the board's bad. Just by listening, you could tell, oh, this door switch is bad because I can see this and this. But you have to be able to say, well, this door switch only controls that. And look, the light bulb goes through the door switch. Right. If I open the door and the light came on, no, what does that mean? Door switch is good. No. Because it's a different contact, but it means I got power got coming power up to my door switch. Remember we said it could be a broken wire? Mm -hmm. But if I open the door and the light comes on, I know what? You got power coming out. Power coming <sighs> Goodness okay. gracious, I gotta get that. Hopefully. No, don't close anything. So if, if the light comes on, I know I got power okay. going to my door switch. If I don't have power here, I know that that wire is not my problem. Notice how like the wire goes two different ways. That little black knot means there's two wires coming off of another wire. One going to the door switch, one going to the board. But if the light came on, I know power's coming in and going to that light bulb just by seeing that. So when I look at diagrams and I troubleshoot diagrams, I don't immediately take everything apart and just start testing. I run things, I open and close the door, see the light come on and off. I want to hear what's running and what's not running, you know? And then say, well, if I hear this pump running, I know that that circuit is good and I got power here. I don't have to check nothing in that circuit. If I know the light came on, I know there's power here. I know that fuse is good. And I know this is good. If the dryer don't start, see your door switch or the relay. Well, it could be a bad board, but these are the things you need to look at when you're looking at it. I'm going to create an assignment for you guys tomorrow. And I'm going to say, this is this, and this is this. I'm going to ask you, where would you test? And also, what reading should you get if you put your meter here, and you're in this cycle, and you're pressing this button? Okay? Only like five or six questions, but just something to follow up and have you follow with these diagrams and and practice a little with yourself. I'll print this out and I'll put some questions to it and I'll say from J21 to J24 you're checking for voltage and you have zero volts what most likely is my problem? Okay, or well, what could you test next? Anybody any questions on this? Because we about an hour here. No? No questions? You guys are all going to do this tomorrow, right? You're going to pass my test? <laughs> Why y'all laughing? You're a lot further advanced than most people. Just gotta practice. I'm gonna do one lecture a week right now. I still want you guys to get through your hands-on projects. I know we lost a lot of time due to this COVID and all this other stuff. So I want you guys to get these projects done. Once we start getting caught up with projects and we start getting a little bit back towards normal, I will go ahead and. Um, Start giving two weeks, two two lectures a week, like we used to. Okay. If not, that's it, guys. I'll I'll do the diagram of questions for you guys tomorrow. Can you right? post that video? Yeah, I'll post the video on, on that channel. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay.